Hello everybody, Tello here and today I'm gonna share a video showcasing a playthrough of mine on a merciless PvP solo server, which is basically a server where you drop all of your loot, it's like hardcore PvP. I played on a regular PvP server before, but there wasn't really too much PvP going on, so I figured I'd start over on a solo server and uh, I'm gonna share some of my playthrough here. The thing is, because I haven't really shown any content of this game on YouTube yet, I am experimenting and still not 100% sure how I'm gonna exactly do this, so I'm gonna show a bunch of the PvE stuff as well, just beating some of the early bosses. Not sure how interesting that's gonna be, I'm not sure how this video is gonna work out in general, but I'm looking forward to your feedback if you like this one, and if you don't, I'm gonna experiment and try to do some other stuff, maybe some more PvP-centric videos, a bit more montage-like uh, footage. Also, actually, yesterday I played with Hot Biscuit on a Merciless PvP server, and we basically only PvP'd and we had some really great clips, so I'm gonna make a video about that soon as well. And I promise that I'm gonna make a beginner's guide video, and that's gonna take a tiny bit longer than expected, so apologies about that as well, but uh, I will have to redo a few of those things and I'm gonna see if I can get that done soon. Anyway, have fun with the video. Woo! 93% rope blood, I'm not saying no to that. Are there any systems in place to prevent Zerg in this game? I mean, the clan size is small. Oh shit, I got a reinforced uh, bone axe, that's huge. Because with that I can get copper, uh, yeah, copper already. Okay, I want to see... Did you wall this off? Oh, that's more gems. I want to get those gems early when I can. Because the thing is, um, you want to get the upgraded amulet early on, and you don't know which, you're, which one you're going to get, if you're going to get one at all. Um, and you need, like, three stones specific gems to upgrade it but um yeah uh, surging in this game is like i have a i have a problem or like i'm a little concerned about that because people could technically go on a merciless pvp server and just group up with like 10 people or something like that or 12 people or whatever and just completely dominate the server um and there isn't like anything really that you can do against it on an official server at least on um a private server you could moderate it and just ban those people or something like that but yeah i don't know people will have to figure things out um yeah i want to get the castle going as soon as possible because i have a bunch of copper and i want to get it smelting i'll need a bunch of wood to build my little base Oh, okay, I want to see if I can find the alpha wool for like any bosses really. I could have already moved. I guess I can go to the bandit logging camp and get that one boss. I'm a little low level for it, but I should be able to kill him already. So right here I'm engaging my first V blood unit, which are basically a bunch of different bosses in the world. And if you manage to kill them, you will be able to obtain their abilities Mega Man style. This is Rufus. It's technically not the first one that you're supposed to kill. He's like a tiny bit higher level already, but that doesn't really matter that much because I know where the bosses are located and I just got this one on the way. Uh, early bosses are pretty simple, this one just shoots you with a crossbow here and there. There's nothing really to watch out for, you can very easily sidestep a lot of the abilities. And uh, he throws a net every now and then that immobilizes you, it's also easy to dodge. Um, one thing that you kind of have to watch out for, he summons adds for once, which you can try to dodge or you can try to clear them. And every now and then he enrages, which makes him attack a little bit faster. And then at some point he just starts recharging his crossbow like crazy. And then he just starts firing a bunch of crossbow bolts, which you can also just sidestep or you can use your space bar or your counter or whatever to dodge it as well. Overall, pretty easy. Um, should be able to beat it. It can be a little tricky in the very beginning when you don't really know what to do, but uh, pretty sure people will be able to solo this boss pretty easily. 
Oh, and you can find this boss on the south side of the lumber camp. He will always be there if he hasn't been killed already. He does not patrol around or anything. There we go. What weapon do I like the most? Um, I mean, I always use a mixture of weapons. You kind of need to use multiple ones if you want to play PvP properly. I mean, I like the slashers. Oh, nice. I got the crossbow. That's huge. Crossbow is very useful. Okay, my inventory is full. I gotta get my base going. Doesn't really... Wait, how many castles can I make on this server too? Okay, good. Go away. Shh, shh, go away. <laughs> this guy is established already. I kind of want to build my base here, but at the same time, I actually don't want to mess with it because um, when Castle PvP enables and my PvP protection is gone, he can just come in and destroy my base if he really wants to. And I don't really want to mess with that right now. But he built here as well already, though. Honestly, fuck it, I'm just building there then. Takes a while to destroy a base? No, the basic, like the, whoops, the wooden wall, oops, the wooden walls are easy to destroy. Just uh, putting borders down there to prevent him from building too much closer to me. Oh, I also need to finish walling this off. Because people can jump in right now. The server has been around for a while, so people definitely have frog farm and stuff like that already. Okay. Getting significant upgrades here for the time being. Honestly, I shouldn't have even used... I shouldn't have even made these... Ah, whatever, it's fine, actually. The Merciless PvP server. People are gonna steal my shit. So it's good if I have extra. I mean, not very good stuff for other people, but for me, it is... It is good right now. I wanna get a little bit more... Tiny bit more lumber going before I leave. I wonder if during starting it is sufficient to route... To get Warrior's Blood? Oh yeah, maybe, actually. The thing is, I got this 93% um, rogue blood. If I hadn't gotten that, I would have gotten some worker blood on the way. But honestly, since PvP is not a thing right now, since I have PvP protection for the time being, um, yeah, since I have PvP protection for the time being, I really don't need that blood. All right, I can make a blood altar, right? I should probably do that. Yeah, 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 I should do that. I want to track the Alpha Wolf. I don't usually need the Blood Altar, but the Alpha Wolf is important and it patrols a lot. Okay, one thing that I need to keep in mind next time when I start... Whenever I see ruins anywhere, like little stone walls and stuff like that, I should I should be um, just completely destroying them because they give a lot more stone than the regular stones. Uh, where are we? Time to see if we can get the wolf. Oh, right here. Look, these, these little stone thingies. Look how much more stone this gives. This is insane. Like, I just got like 60 stone or 70 stone in a super short time. Look, I only get three per hit here. And then on the other one, I got a lot more. You need like three explosives to destroy a wood wall, I think. So I want to see if I can... Increase my defense a tiny bit. Against this other dude in case he wants to raid me. This is the alpha wolf that I've been talking about. This is basically the first boss that you're supposed to kill. It's really easy, it doesn't really do anything. Summons adds sometimes and just does basic attacks. You can counter and dodge most of it. Just play it safe and you'll be fine. And once you kill it, you get the wolf form, which is just gonna help you travel around a lot faster. This guy really wanted to PvP me.
Let's go to the Trapper camp. I need to get some blood. I can get 30% rope blood. Or, like, I, I think early game, you want to get movement speed from your blood. So you, you either need 30% plus rope blood, or beast blood, or creature blood, whatever. You're looking a little hot -blooded. Let me cool you off. Keely is basically a mandatory boss to kill. She kind of looks a little bit like Ash. She does very basic attacks as well. These are all the early bosses, so you don't really have to worry too much. He does like a frost volley attack that takes forever to cast, and you just have to wait it out uh, and then counter it or dodge it, or you can even just sidestep it. And uh, what you get from her after killing her, you get one of the best PvP abilities, uh, Frost Bats, which are basically two frost projectiles that you can shoot. And if you hit both of them, you will freeze the enemy, so you can use that to like CC people and then combo them with the spear or something like that later on. And uh, also she gives you access to leather working, so you can create leather out of animal hides and you need that to progress further. So you definitely have to kill her. You can always find her at the bandit trapper camp. <laughs> Okay, I think I can start making my first copper weapon, probably. Because I already collected so much copper and it's been smelting all this time. Uh, castle PvP gets enabled in an hour or two, I'm not sure. They changed it, I just don't know what the castle PvP time is. It's such a cute little castle. He's, he's so upset that I built a ba base next to him. <laughs> So upset. I would say I want to have a copper spear first, but I think <coughs> having mobility is actually more important. I think I changed my opinion. How oh, is the solo experience on a full loot PvP server? It is pretty harsh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Um, so I want to get some more copper. Oh, I do want to get. I don't want to track the Chaos Archer. The Chaos Archer is very important to get. Just for her ability. How far did I go with my first char? I mean, I'm pretty much endgame with my first character. Okay, I have Dark Silver. I have almost full, the full uh, cloth set, the, the last one. There's like only one piece missing, but I don't have the recipe for it. Somebody's killing the Chaos Archer. Oh, never mind. The Chaos Archer is fighting wolves. This is like the other boss in the early game that patrols a lot, so she won't be easy to find without the Blood Altar. But when you find her early, you can beat her basically with level 1 already. It's going to be a little trickier, though. And she's like one of the bosses that are already a tiny bit harder. She shoots like volleys of three chaos bolts and she aims a little bit better with that. So you, you can not sidestep it easily, but still you gotta be a little careful and uh, you can just counter them again, space it as well. And then uh, she stalls every now and then and after a while she appears again. And every now and then she does this ground target ability where she shoots like three or four projectiles on the ground that leave uh, chaos fire on the ground. Um, as long as you don't get hit, and if you play careful, she's easy to kill. You can basically kill her naked as well, uh, even if you won't deal a lot of damage. And she drops basically, or she gives you the best uh, PvP ability in the game, honestly. Uh, Chaos Barrage, or Chaos Volley, I think it's called. Um, it's like two projectiles that you shoot, and they deal massive damage. It's just really powerful in PvP. What is the end game? Why do you need to kill bosses? For crafting recipes and abilities and stuff like that. That's our PvP buff is still up, but it's gonna go away in 8 minutes. So while I have it, I still wanna go for a copper run. Here, this is the ability that I unlock now. It's one of the best PvP ability. Honestly, it's probably the best PvP ability. It deals absurd damage. In both PvP and PvE. Oh, he, he wants to kill me. I could just disable my PvP and maybe kill him. 
I don't know. I, I'm, I changed my opinion. I changed my mind. If he wants to raid me, he wants to raid me. Whatever. I don't want to waste this much wood to try and defend my base. Making some potions. Okay, so my PP protection is gonna go away now. Oh. PP buff is still up, but I can't disable it. Okay. Oh! That's an upgrade for my gear. I forgot to actually equip my new gear too. <laughs> Alright. Oh shit! This guy had three copper weapons! Oh! Uh. Right, I wanted to go for Gorgswan. And he became invulnerable. When you drink the blood of the blood unit, you're invulnerable for the time before you do it. Kill the summoner because he's gonna throw a million ass at me. This is basically the most annoying of the V Blood units. He always spawns at this graveyard uh, in the south. But sometimes he also leaves the graveyard and patrols around, um, so if you can't find him, it's definitely useful to track him as well. And uh, he is the most annoying boss because he just spams those ground target abilities everywhere that leave poison around. So if you don't have a ranged weapon, you can't really get in and deal damage a lot of the times. And then at some point later on, he also turns invulnerable periodic periodically and will just spam those ground target abilities everywhere and then stand in the poison and it's just really annoying and uh but if you're f careful about it you will be fine you won't really take any damage if you just stay behind it'll just take a little while if you have a crossbow it's definitely useful for this fight and you can shoot him i could be using my crossbow here but i'm not i don't really know why but i mean i'm dealing decent damage here. Sometimes you can also tank the poison for a little bit, it doesn't deal too much damage, but just be careful about it. Oh my gosh, it hit the hit, it hit the tree in front of me, I didn't even see that was a tree. Marcel's Night Stalker Boots, Course Threat, Copper Ingots. Ooh, wait, do I have it enough for that? I do. What am I doing? Kill the Stonebreaker real fast. Might get ganked in the Copper Mines though. And kill the Armorer. The boss up, yes. And here we have the Stonebreaker. You can always find this one in the Copper Mines. He never leaves this area. Again, 
all the early bosses are pretty easy. He does this ground target ability in a line that's very telegraphed. He does this weird spinny attack and he has a little like tiny forward charge with like an up slash. Deals very little damage, honestly, and um, you can tank it for quite a bit as well. And then when he gets a little bit lower HP, instead of just doing a forward line attack, he does one in like four directions at a cross, basically, and that's pretty easy to dodge as well. It's even counterable. So as long as you pay attention, this one shouldn't be too hard as well. Uh, he gives you access to bigger chests and he gives you this ground target ability that he's using as well, which is not very good. Okay, wait, what do I want to do now? The armor, right, let's do that. The armor. What level are you? Oh, it's Nunia. Ah. The armorer has a tiny bit more mechanics, but still pretty simple overall. He sometimes shoots those three projectiles in a line in front of him. He also does his forward up slash attack. He does a spin attack as well. All fairly easy. Uh, one thing that he does do as well, he spawns some ads and he also spawns all those um, traps around him. When he starts throwing them, he will basically throw them in three volleys. So you have some time to deal free damage to him. Um, and if there are too many traps on the ground and you have trouble dodging them, you can interact with those armors that are around that area and you will become invulnerable for 10 seconds. You won't be able to deal any damage, but while you're invulnerable, you can run through all of the traps and basically just remove them. And this boss gives you access to the workshop floor, which is really useful later on, so I definitely recommend getting this one. Damn Nunia. He ganked me on a he ganked me on a beta server once with, with his friends. That wasn't cool. Oh, recipes! Oh my gosh, recipes everywhere! Nunia just didn't loot them. Well I'm bringing those home. That's sick. Does farming bosses give anything? Um, kind of. Later bosses drop guaranteed uh, golden jewelry, and that's pretty important for late game. It's actually a pretty neat castle location for early game. I like this one. Next to the copper mine, it's very central. Yeah, I think this is the spot where I'll build whenever I can in the future. A time to research. Nice, and we got a merciless weapon. That's very important because without that, we can't progress to the next area. Or we, I mean, we can't get iron without a merciless weapon. So I could upgrade this. It's probably worth it. I mean, if I die and lose it, it would suck. But do I have an unsalty tart? Yes, I do. Perfect. I also got a great blood essence so I can get the ring too. I don't want to upgrade my gear yet, I guess, because I don't quite need it yet. Strong enough to beat everything that I need to beat right now. And if I get ganked, it would suck if I lose everything. Okay, time to get the Clive Firestarter ability. How many hours did I spend on this server? Not long. An hour and 30 minutes max. He's cool on travel scale. I mean, Rogue Blood, I think, is just the best for open world PvP. I mean, uh, Scholar Blood is good too, but I just really like having the mov movement speed because it's all about kiting, especially if you fight against multiple enemies. Oh, they're just fighting a tree ant. Okay. Oh, never mind. There's a player there. I don't know what level he is, though. I tell. Ah, Man, I messed up hitting that counter. They probably didn't have a lot of stuff on them anyway. I mean, could have gotten their gear, but I think I had better gear. 
But still, I mean, if they have bronze weapons, which they did, always bronze weapons are very valuable on Merciless servers in this stage of the game. So this is Clef, the fire starter. He's level 30. So as soon as you're like around level 20 something, level 25 maybe, you can probably do it a little bit earlier as well. You should probably do this one early on because uh, especially if you're interested in PvP, this guy gives you the best space ability in the game, giving you a double space cast and leaving behind little illusions that will actually explode on your opponents as well. And it's just pretty much a must have. There's no other space ability that really comes close to this one. Um, as for mechanics, well, this boss basically just leaves behind a big bomb that explodes in a big radius when he dodges. Uh, and he does that more and more the lower HP he gets. And every now and then he throws a little bomb that will then split into uh, clusters twice. So there's just going to be a lot of explosions on the ground. Um, so you got to be careful about that. One thing uh, that you can keep in mind it's going to be kind of hard to deal damage as a melee against him, but um, these big explosions actually take a long time to actually explode. And if you're feeling confident, you can actually stay in the circle for a little while to deal a little bit more damage before committing a bit more. Um, also, this boss shouldn't be too hard, but make sure that you clear ads around the area or it can become very chaotic. You can find this boss always at the sulfur mines on the very west of the Farbane Woods. playing on Merciless right now. Best, best PvP weapon low level? Uh, I would have said Spear. And Spear is definitely great, but um, maybe... Maybe Mace could be better. I don't know. Spear and Mace are both good. Depends on what you want to do, kind of. Ooh, Twilight Snapper, that's huge. Oh my god. Okay, now I just really don't want to die. Oh, let me drink some blood, um, because with the Twilight Snapper, I can learn how to turn into a rat. But yeah, um, I would say Spear or Mace. Ah, the thing is, I started, I made a, a beginner's guide video, um, but it's not done yet. Um, I just need to basically make the clips for it still. I have like the the script and the narration and everything done. But I actually changed my opinion on a couple of things, and now I don't know. I feel like I, feel like I kind of want to redo the whole video. <laughs> I saw that, Nunia. Okay. Um... Okay, what do I need? Gear though is too low for Polora. Oh, it's because I don't have a weapon equipped. I can do Polora, this guy, this guy. Let's try Nicholas. Really dangerous though, because this guy is pretty strong. But the thing is, I actually need. I need uh, Grave Dust. I definitely prefer Maze over Spear now. If you want to run uh, Frost Bats, then Spear is better though, early game, because you can freeze somebody and then follow it up with a Spear Burst, and it's kind of insane how much damage you can deal with it. Why do I like the Mace? Because early game, or in general, this game is all about mobility and kiting. Oops. What the heck? This guy just moved. While casting. It's all about mobility and... The mace gives you extra mobility with the Q ability. See if somebody has done this already. These things haven't been looted. Oh, nice grave dust. Oh, they have been looted here though. You just hear a sound. What are you fighting up there? Okay, somebody just killed this. How much grave dust do I have? Three? That's enough to make the putrid rat. And honestly, the putrid rat I think is going to be very useful. Or I could make a better amulet, which might be better even. 
Um, no, you can't really do anything to like be. I mean, you can get sun resistance equipment and potions and stuff like that that can help you in the sun, but you can't be immune to the sun. I'll check out the graveyard again. I need more grave dust, and I want to kill that boss. Uh, can we move castle bot later if we want to? Um, not really. If you're playing on a solo or dual server, you have two castle hearts that you can build. So you can build one castle heart in one zone and then move uh, build another castle heart in another zone. And then you can slowly migrate over, move all of your loot over and build a new castle at the other location. But you can't uh, just move your entire castle. Oh my god, whoa! What? Huh? I've never seen this many summoners here. How did I not take any damage? <laughs> I would say Nikolaus is probably the hardest boss in Farbane Woods. Um, he spawns a million adds, he shoots a little projectile every now and then, which is easy to dodge, but if you do get hit by it, it hits really hard. Um, I think the hardest part about this boss is just him spawning a lot of those adds. You will basically just have to kite them around all the time. It's quite difficult to kill them and these adds will just keep blocking attacks against the boss, so it's kind of tricky. Every now and then he teleports somewhere and then he shoots like three volleys of those little whirling projectiles in a circle around him. Um, they're pretty easy to dodge if you pay attention to it, but while you're being chased by all those adds, it can be quite tricky as well. So you gotta be careful about all that. And then when he gets a little lower, he spawns more and more adds. And there's always like one or two crossbow archers in there as well. And they will just deal a little bit of damage to you over time. And uh, you will just get chipped down, chipped down, even if you dodge all of the big projectiles. So. Yeah, this boss isn't easy. Um, you might want to get a little higher level to actually tackle this boss. But on the bright side, this boss doesn't really give you anything that you really need. I mean, he gives you, I think, a barrier that spawns skeletons when the enemies hit into it. And yeah, that's about it. He doesn't really give anything great. And you can always find Nikolaus in the center of Farbane Woods in the big graveyard on the very top of the hill. Is there a player down there? We felt that, uh, just got knocked over down below, so I feel like there might be a player. Oh, zero. Wait, what? Just running around naked. Oh, I'm so slow now. Feels bad. And what has the slasher slash scythe abilities? Tempted to craft them, but my hammer expo are just so much fun. The slashers are very good. Um, honestly, both in PvP and PvE, they have great utility. I don't know if you care about PvP or PvE. Uh, and the, the um, scythe is really good in PvE. Why are people running around with level 0? Um, and PvP protected. The slash, uh, sorry, the scythe is extremely good in PvE because it has an ability where you can throw down like a spinning axe on the ground. I 
feel bad. I feel bad. But it's a merciless PvP server. It has it has so it's in it, it's it's in its name. No mercy. Oh my gosh, I feel so bad though. <laughs> I need to start making some stone bricks. Durability is the most annoying thing for me so far. Yeah, durability is really annoying for sure. Um, you can change how much durability you lose in your server settings, though. So. You can progress really fast in this game if you know what you're doing. I've only been playing for two hours, roughly, and I'm almost ready to move on to the next zone. If I like focus harder on speedrunning, I could probably already be in the next zone. I might switch to PvP. I'm concerned that I will lose my gear all the time. Yeah, merciless PvP is extremely punishing if you don't know what you're doing. I'm probably gonna probably gonna have a rough time later on as well. Also, um, if you do play merciless PvP, I, I'm playing on a solo server right now, so uh, it's not as bad if I get ganked by people. But like. The thing is, if you play on a regular Merciless server, then you might just get ganked by three people or whatever, or four people, and it's extremely annoying. That's what That was my first Merciless PvP experience. I just started and I immediately got ganked. There was not even, like, PvP protection in the beginning yet. You guys recommend PvE to learn the game first or go straight into PvP? That depends on how you want to play the game. I mean, I immediately jumped into PvP because I just love PvP. PvP. Um, but I'm also like I played their previous game professionally, so I already like had an idea of how this game was gonna work. But still, I mean, I don't know. It depends on how you want to play it. Um, for me, PvP just makes games fun. It like gives me a reason to even play this, you know. Um, oh, somebody died here. <clears throat> but if you just really want to have a ca casual chill time, then maybe you want to go PvE. We do have a community server. That's PvE only. If you're interested, you can uh, join our Discord and ask one of the mods, and they can give you the info. For this one, I actually have to use my crossbow, I think. Actually, I can use my spear. This bear can be quite tricky as well. You want to play very defensively against this bear. He does a cron target ability every now and then, which spawns a lot of like falling rocks everywhere. Uh, so you got to be careful about that. And then uh, he will just walk up to you and do does like a really slow basic attack against you, which you can then just kite away from. You don't have to use an ability for it. Uh, but then every now and then he enrages and he starts moving faster and attacking a lot faster. And for that, you have to be really careful because you can't really walk away from it anymore and you need a defensive skill for that or you will take a bunch of damage. Uh, right here I'm just spacing out my escape ability as long as possible and while I am using that space ability I'm basically invisible to the enemy and he will attack the after image that I will leave behind. It doesn't really do anything in PvP but in PvE it will basically just taunt the enemy, sort of. And then when he loses a little bit of HP he will also start charging at you which you usually can just sidestep. But yeah, as long as you play defensively and you get like maybe a couple hits in here and there, maybe some crossbow bolt hits and the use of your Chaos Barrage, you're going to be fine and you can kill this boss over time. You can always find this boss in the very east of Farbane Woods in the Big Bear Cave. And he gives you the ability to transform into a bear, which is pretty much useless, except for being able to destroy the barrier to the bandit camp where you can kill the final boss of Farbane Wood, which is necessary to move on to the next zone. Uh, where is the server base? It's my my PVE server or the server that I'm playing on right now. My PVE server, the community server, is uh, in Europe. How long have I been playing? On this server only for two hours, roughly. In general, I've been playing for close to 30 hours. Oh nice, okay, I actually have enough for this now. I need what? I actually need stones. I need fish bones and the twilight snapper. Where are my fish bones? Oh, do I have enough fish bones? I hope I do. Oh, I just have enough. Right. Perfect. <clears throat> 
I have to... I have to bait the rat into my base. Come here. With a Twilight Snapper, four fish bones, and eight Crave Dust, you are able to summon a Putrid Rat with this building over there. And the Putrid Rat is also a V-Blood unit, which you can only beat this way. And if you manage to summon it and kill it, you get the ability to turn into a rat, which hides your name and your HP bar, turns you into a little rat with red glowing eyes, and you can hide in little bushes and sneak up on people or, you know, it's just, it's just extremely useful in PvP. Um, if you pay close attention, you can see it, but if, especially if somebody is sitting in a bush, it's kind of difficult to see, and, and it's especially useful against people who don't really know how this works yet. I, th I would say it's a must-have on a merciless PvP server. Yay! Rough, rough farm is a must in full loot, yeah. I'm a bit stuck on level 30 gear. I can't get Mercer's Night Stalker set. I'm not able to kill the level 34 to 37 bosses. Let me see, 34 to 37. <sighs> yeah, that's that's rough. I don't know. Do you have like everything else upgraded already? Do you have? I mean, I'm 36. Okay, I have. I guess I have uh, three pieces of the Merciless gear, so I got got like three extra item levels from that. Do you have like uh, one of those good rings? Like something like Mystic Net gear level 12. And a Merciless weapon. I mean, I don't know. Um, it's just kind of tricky because if you have everything on max gear level and the only way you can increase your gear level is by um, getting... It's by getting better... It's by getting like blueprints, then it's kind of tough, you know? like nothing no like real tip i can give you you can like definitely beat the boss with like level 30 or something already solo but it's kind of just kind of tricky you know the thing is if you have the um i don't know if you've got the chaos dash already from clive the fire starter which you can like find over here if you can get that spacebar ability um like one thing that's like not super obvious in the beginning if you space during this time where this uh, after image is visible, you are basically invisible to PvE mobs and they will attack the after image as long as you don't attack, right? Um, so you can like really use that to just stall a lot of the times if you if you are under a lot of pressure and like just focus really hard on trying to avoid damage. And like one thing that you can do, you can like dash and then you can like start a left click on the crossbow and then do that again twice. Um, and until you shoot the crossbow, you're basically invisible. And then, like, you can, like, deal a little bit of damage like that. You can maybe use your Chaos, um, Chaos Volley to deal damage out of stealth as well. And then, like, just try to survive until you can do that again. How do you unlock crossbow crafting? You have to kill... <coughs> this guy. You get a woodworking bench, and then you can craft a hunter's crossbow. And you can find him in the bandit locking camp in this area. And you can also try to get some better blood. You can like look around if you can find some really high quality blood. Um, I forgot which one it was. It's either brute or warrior blood. Um, if you get that on, uh, I think 30% plus quality, then you get one extra item level. And I think it also, I think it's also the blood that heals you on basic attacks. So that's really useful for PVE if you're really struggling with the bosses. Thanks for asking these questions, by the way, because I wanted to make a beginner's guide video and it's actually really useful to hear what you're struggling with because I, I already wrote the script and everything and I have a lot of tips in there. It's not done yet, though. Oh, we're doing the boss. Oh no! Ooh, that's some 
good rock blood. I'll take that. I feel a little sorry for ganking this guy, but uh, whatever. It's for Mercer's PvP, I don't know what to say. This is just how it goes. <clears throat> Fighting this guy during his daytime is a little annoying. This is basically the final and most important boss of Farbane Woods because it allows you to create iron weapons after beating him, which is a big step up to the next zone. Um, He's fairly simple as a boss. I mean, he does definitely has a few mechanics already. He uh, charges at you every now and then, which you can usually sidestep. Uh, he also does like this crown target ability and a cone in front of him, which deals a little bit of damage initially, and then it explodes after a while. So make sure that you move out of it. And after a while, he also enables a shield, which he activates every now and then. And if you hit it, you get hit by a projectile back and it deals a lot of damage, like you can see right here. Just don't hit into it. You can use crowd target abilities against it, but no projectiles or regular melee attacks. When he gets low HP, he will say some voice line and then he will basically start charging three times in a row, which can all be sidestepped usually as well, but it's safer to just space away. Uh, be careful though, if you leave the after images behind, it, they will charge at the after image, so don't stand in the line so you get hit, maybe behind the after image or whatever. After he does the three charges, he stuns himself for a little while so you can deal some free damage there as well. See how I'm like always like dashing and then waiting for a little bit to like just buy some time? And then I'm like just trying to cycle through my defensive abilities. Okay, that's his ultimate again. Just wait for as long as possible until the recast. It goes for me. And also, this boss gives you access to the first ultimate in the game, which is very powerful. And he gives you one of the better PvP defensive abilities with this Chaos Barrier that he uses every now and then. If enemies hit it, you shoot a projectile at them, deals good damage, and you will also pull them in a little bit. to the sun. <sighs> Amber chain. Uh, uh, what do I drop? This. After beating the boss, I started migrating to the new area in Dunley Farmlands. My favorite castle spot wasn't available anymore, so I just settled for something simple close by. And it takes a, quite some time to build this new base. I think I spent like almost an hour on it. Um, and it's like very bare bones. So I'm just gonna not show that to you because it's kind of boring. Uh, this was only my first day playing on the server. If this was interesting, I will also create a video of the second day. There's going to be a little bit more PvP there as well. I hope you like the video and I'm looking forward to making more content. The beginner's guide is coming out soon-ish as well, hopefully, and I'm going to have some more PvP-centric content coming up as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate you. And, and if you have any ideas for content, if there's like something specific that you want to see, please let me know in the comments. And I'm just so excited to have some game that I really enjoy again that I can make some content for. Anyway, much love. Bye bye.